Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church. And we're going through the book of Revelation. That's right, going through the book of Revelation, but in really small, bite-sized, easy to handle chunks. Why are we going through it so slowly? Um, well, for a couple reasons. I think one, I think we can go through it too quickly and we can receive a lot of information and then uh, we forget that information or we don't understand why we're reading it or why we're learning what we're learning. So I think we can go through it too quickly, but I think also that, you know, we can have an overload of information and it can make us feel overwhelmed and we become frustrated there and we uh, don't feel encouraged to continue. You know, I feel like you, you get frustrated or you feel like you don't understand something. It, it makes you not want to continue. And I think Revelation is one of those books we might start with good intentions but uh, we end up getting lost and we end up getting distracted and we're trying to figure out why am I reading this? You know, what, how does it benefit my life? What, what am I gonna supposed to learn from it? And uh, I think the point of it can sometimes get lost. So let's go through it slowly. Let's examine it, let's break it down and, and go through it in a way that it keeps us all on the same page. Now we're only in Revelation chapter four right now and we're probably doing you know, one chapter every two or three videos. Revelation 4 was about uh, the throne room of God, being in the throne room. John gets to go into the throne room of God. He sees the 24 elders. We talked a little bit about that and what that means. And I'll just finish out the chapter and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Revelation chapter 4 says, And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne and they say, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. So I think we can read that and then come away and I think maybe our first question would be well, what are those what are those creatures right they obviously all look different they they don't look like anything of earth so they must be symbols of something or they must represent something it's possible the bible doesn't say well, let's make that clear the bible doesn't say so is there a way for us to truly know no would any teaching on that just be speculation yeah. So what's the important part that we're supposed to learn? Because I don't think John got invited into the throne room. He watches this spectacular scene. And then he says to himself, those living creatures, I wonder what those things are. I wonder what they're called. I wonder why they look the way they do. I wonder if they symbolize something. Do you think that's what John is thinking as he is in the throne room of God? watching this spectacular scene? Or do you think that he is thinking, I am in the throne room of God, right? And that everything that takes place here is worship. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, worship. From anything and everything in this room, they worship the one on the throne. And I really think that that heavenly scene, this picture, is what we're supposed to take away from this and nothing else. That God is worthy and that that is what worship is really all about. You know, it's, it's our response to how great God is. And worship is also about where we stand on that scale. You know, where God is and then where, where we are. And it doesn't matter. Uh, if we're this big fantastical creature or if we're just a puny little human. Everything gives thanks and praise and glory and honor to God. You're in his presence and you just fall over 
you give thanks, right? That's how worship should be. You should be so engrossed in the worship that you don't even notice that time is passing. That you're not thinking to yourself, well, that was three songs, we should stop. Why are they singing this song so long? Why is it still going on? You know, if they keep singing, it's going to cut into the, into the sermon. And if the sermon goes too long, it's going to cut into lunch. Is that what we're supposed to be thinking? As we worship the one who sits on the throne? Are we really looking at our watch and thinking, I'm going to be late for the lunch line, late for the lunch specials. I got stuff to do. You know, Monday morning I have to go back to work. I got a big to-do list. You know, Saturday was, that was rough. I don't know if I should do that again. We come into church and we're still thinking about us and our lives and our wants and our needs. Why are we, what are we doing? This is the throne room of heaven being described that John sees. And the worship there is ongoing and never ceasing. And it's not about the people in the room, right? So let's, let's not study the people in the room because that's not what's important. What's important is the worship of the one who sits on the throne. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord. Come before his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts, right? His throne room with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. But what if we don't feel like it? What if we don't want to? It's not about us. Worship is not about us. Worship is a spiritual discipline and the reason why we come here to church is, is to give ourselves over to that, to learn to approach the throne room with thanksgiving, to receive those blessings. Listen to Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout. Come into his presence with singing, not complaining, right? Not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow. Come into his gates with thanksgiving. You're so thankful to be in church, to be in his presence, right? Bless his name. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. These are all things that we can praise God for and thank God for. Worship is not passive. Worship is not something you watch on a stage. Worship is something that's active and it should be an event in your life. And perhaps, like the throne room of God, it never ceases. Worship doesn't stop just because church stops. There has to be joy and thankfulness and praise. So, my hope for you is when you read a chapter like this in the scripture, you're not concerned about the ones doing the worship. Who cares who those creatures are, right? Knowing who they are does not benefit my life and it does not secure my salvation. I should be thinking, man, I want to worship like that. I want to sing like that. I want to greet others like that. I want to pray like that. I want to listen like that. I want to experience the power like that. When I come in to the presence of God, I want authentic worship like that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.